What's going on everybody? Sean Pierce Johnson here with this episode of Stompbox Saturday and I'm very excited to be showing you what is on the stomping block today. The Walrus Audio Red Distortion. You know, I use the word gnarly a lot. I guess it's the California in me. And to me, this is like the gnarliest distortion pedal I've ever come across. It is not trying to be any emulation of a high gain amplifier. It's not trying to be any sort of clone of a pedal that's already existed, at least not one that I've come across. It really just does its own thing and it does it very well. It can get you sort of classic distortion pedal tones to more of like the 90s alternative sound, even veering into some uh, alternative metal sounds if you play your cars right with the EQ. And it couldn't be simpler to dial in a tone. So let's take a look at the pedal and see what exactly we're working with. Five knobs and a two-way switch on the pedal. Volume, gain, pretty self-explanatory and bass, middle, and treble, a three band EQ, and all those controls are active. So that means you're boosting those frequencies as well as being allowed to cut those frequencies. And it is very, very powerful. You have the texture switch. Now that is very, very interesting because you get the ability to select two different styles of clipping of the distortion. The up position is going to be a more open, sort of overdrive kind of sound, and the bottom position is going to be much more hard clipped, something a little bit more higher gain, uh, but you do get a bit of a drop in volume, as one would expect with a heavily compressed signal. So you're just going to need to make up for that with the volume knob. So before we start dialing in any tones, I think it would be a good idea for us to turn all knobs to 12 o'clock on their dials and we're going to check out exactly what we're working with. You're getting the trusty Les Paul into the Walrus Red and into my Rocker Verb 100 set clean and this is my clean tone. And now turning on the red. All knobs at noon and we'll start in the up position and we'll turn the knobs and see what we're working with. I can feel that that bass under my butt like it's shaking the floor come on don't act like you don't scoop your mids and want to just play riffs all day long kind of sounds like we're blowing up an amplifier. see how much gain we have on tap. And you can see like all the way down we have a fair amount to start out. It's it's not a mild distortion pedal. So that's the up position. Now let's go to the down position on the texture switch. You'll immediately notice a drop in volume. So to compensate, just bump up the volume a little bit. I'm not going to put it up too much. I don't really want to push the front end of the amp too much because this, this pedal is, is very powerful and you have to watch how you control your knobs. Okay. 
as you can see, still a good amount of gain on tap. <laughs> So the down position, much grittier, much more clawing, compressed. Either way, both positions sound cool and they can yield a wide variety of tones. So let's go ahead and dial in some sounds. So I think of the two texture positions on the red, I like the up position. To me, it feels a lot more organic, and I typically like that kind of sound. I, I usually like to hear something familiar, but this EQ can take that sound and just make it whatever I want to make it. I've kind of gone for a sound here that's a little bit of a sort of, you know, I really can't describe it in a, a technical term. I can't describe it in, in terms that most guitarists would relate to. Uh, but if any of you out there know the band Burning Brides, they were like an LA-based indie metal band uh, that I used to listen to a lot when I was in high school. And it's kind of got this, their guitar sound just had this kind of big muff meets high watt kind of sound to it. It just was like, not anything like David Gilmore. It was very riff-centric, and it was very big and massive, but fuzzy and articulate. I've kind of gone for something like that. So I'll go ahead and play, and you guys can hear what I'm talking about. distortion even on that more organic sounding still has kind of this fuzzy vibe to it uh i i kind of have referred to it as the grungy aspect of the distortion pedal it just it's not quite that nice and polite kind of gain that you usually get from a distortion pedal there's a little bit of grunge to it it's a little bit more dirty and nasty than your typical distortion pedal which makes it very very cool of course, the EQ, super powerful. We could even take that sound and morph it further. Now we have something that's a little bit more in line with a big muff. got that spiky high end that most fuzzes tend to have, but it's kind of sputtery too, which uh, I think sounds really cool. <laughs> Especially on solos. And of course, Scooping the mid-range just makes playing guitar by yourself all the more fun.
but that's just the up position and what that can do. Let's go ahead and flick to the down position on the texture switch and see what we can get out of that. Now, when it comes to the down position on the texture switch, I like to use this for kind of a pseudo fuzz sound. I'm boosting the mid range here, which is really gonna give us that nice kind of honky sound. And then that over compressed sound is gonna get us something that's a little bit more gritty and a little bit more sputtery. Now, the key to this sound for me is using the treble knob. Now the frequency that it's set at is kind of your articulation frequency. So I dial that back just a little bit to get something just a little bit smoother. And I find that this is a really cool fuzz replacement. <laughs> great sustain and like I said this isn't a very polite distortion pedal but you can make it sound polite if you just know how to work the knobs it's really a great exploration tool now you might be thinking what does this setting sound like for a rhythm part well let's go ahead and play a little bit of rhythm <laughs> You might be thinking, where is that gonna fit? That by itself seems kinda, eh, I don't know if I like that so much. Well, that's what I love about the red is that there is so much to this pedal other than just high gain. You can create different textures that quite frankly in the solo context might not be what you're looking for, but in a band context and in a mix context, You've got a powerful EQ with a wide range of gain settings that you can find just about any kind of color that you want from red. Any color you want from red. Really, red is red, isn't it? Well, anyway. But there is, there's one question that I have to ask of red. Red, do you gent? <laughs> Gents. And that, my friends, is the red distortion from Walrus Audio. If I had to put this pedal into a word, it would be powerful. Powerful EQ, powerful gain, and a whole load of volume output. You really got to watch how much you're pumping out of this pedal into your amplifier, because you could be pushing the front end. Now, with distortion pedals, I typically don't like to do that. It's a different story with boost pedals and overdrives. But if you're using something that's got so much gain and so much compression, you don't want to boost the front end of your amplifier with it. You kind of want to just leave it at unity. But I'm having a really fun time finding sounds that I like. Sometimes those sounds won't be so great. Sometimes they'll be perfect. You know, it's just all about taking your fingers, turning the knobs, and finding what works for you. There's a wealth of sounds in there at your disposal. And if you want to let me know what you thought of the Walrus Red, go ahead and leave me a comment section below. And be sure you click that floating circle to never miss an episode of Stompbox Saturday. And until next time, my friends, I'm Sean Pierce Johnson, and I wish you great tone and happy stomping. Cheers. Mm -hmm.